Hey, what's up? Good Tuesday morning to you. Um, as I talked about just last week, we were going to go over the comments that you left on my video talking about the violence in Baltimore City and what many of you and myself would do about it as far as solutions. So I have the video pulled up right now. And let me say, first of all, thank you everybody who commented on it. Um, this is not just an issue in Baltimore. As we know, there is a rise in crime and violence in many cities across the country, not just in urban areas, but many cities across the country. So this is a we the people problem. And so it's good that we're all coming together and talking about solutions. So I definitely appreciate all of you here. Um, so I try to go through, you know, first in the video, I talked about how, you know, now I'm, I'm clearly being censored by YouTube. Uh, the amount of views and stuff that I'm getting is nowhere near what I had before. Now that I made a video that they didn't particularly like and they took down. And so I said, oh, I'm not into conspiracy theories. And a lot of you said, Kim, it's not a conspiracy. <laughs> so I get what you mean. Trust me, I do. Um, but as you know, I can only say but so much here on this channel because that's just how they roll. Um, so I saw some of the comments on here where people said we need mandatory minimums for violent crimes. Uh, this is Robert L. Crawford, by the way. We need mandatory minimums for violent crimes. Stop letting violent criminals out of prison. That's the most important thing. Um, that is the most important thing. You know, we have progressives all across this country that are now state's attorneys, that are now judges, and that are now city council members, that are mayors, and they are being soft on crime completely. If you take a look at what's going on in D.C. right now, Mayor Muriel, Muriel Bowser, sorry, hopefully I said that right, she is a progressive. And uh, I don't know if you saw it, but just over the weekend, there was a shooting outside of the new National Stadium. Now, the Nat Stadium, that area, uh, Southeast D.C. used to be a bad area. Uh, and then they cleaned it all up. And now there's shootings right outside. Um, so with progressives in charge, those that vilify the police, uh, those that defund the police, these are individuals that are now allowing criminals to take advantage and take over areas uh, where they're not necessarily hanging out uh, because criminals know that they have the right of way. Now, it's not good that they should be shooting in areas like West Baltimore either. That's terrible. And the fact that we neglected those areas for so long is absolutely disgusting and disturbing, in my opinion, which is you, why well, you guys know I ran for office. Uh, but at the same time, you see areas like the National Stadium, Fells Point in Baltimore, areas where there weren't much crime and violence, you know, especially just out in the open the way it is now. Now that there is so much there, it's because of the progressives. You know, in Fells Point in Baltimore City, beautiful area, um, is to getting taken over because Zeke Cohen uh, is a progressive and he is a city council member who believes that everybody should just have a free-for-all out there, right? People are selling liquor, people are doing whatever they want there. Um, so businesses are now threatening to put their money into escrow instead of paying taxes. And you guys know that whole story. If you saw my last YouTube um, video on it, which was probably just a couple weeks ago. Um, but now they're sending a ton of police support in the area because the residents have now said, look, we're not going to, you know, have our tax money go to you. We're going to put it in an escrow account. You see, money talks. Money always talks, especially when it comes to politics. Um, so we will continue to scroll down here. Uh, Buck Stallions said, go Kim, go. Uh, so much crap there every time makes me so sad. They don't seem to care at all of the, at all about the school board. And it's so bad that they just scowl at me. Uh, I think what, you know, Buck is saying here is, you know, crime and violence is bad. Definitely. Um, uh, but I, as I mentioned in Baltimore city, the mayor appoints who's on the school board in Baltimore. Like in many areas, you elect your school board members. In Baltimore, the progressive mayor appoints, appoints who's on there. And a lot of these people are friends of a friend, family members, and they do exactly as um, those in office want them to do. It's, it's, it's sad because Baltimore City, I mean, you look at the way things are there, there is literally no way out unless you literally get out of there. Um, you know, it's, it just comes at you in all areas, whether it's crime, violence, education, no career opportunities, no real uh, skilled training on anything. I mean, it, it is terrible. It really is terrible. Um, let's see. Let's see. Do, 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 do. A lot of people are saying, uh, thanks, you know, Kim, for bringing this up. Uh, we like your perspective. Um, Keep up the good work. You should run for mayor. You know, if I lived in Baltimore City, I would I would try to do as such, but I don't actually live in the city. 
Um, uh, Robert Hillier, it is obvious that the present leaders in Baltimore City could give a you-know-what about the people. They just smile, nod their heads, and take their paychecks and hope they come keep coming, hoping their, their paychecks keep coming. From what I see, the city is turning into a cesspool, stagnant and stinks. Those residents must feel so hopeless and forgotten. Uh, yes, Robert, they do, especially in areas, like I said, in West Baltimore. Uh, I was actually just down there today. Uh, we were dropping off money uh, for kids to go to summer camp. And, you know, Miss Joyous, who, you know, helps out at Simmons Memorial Baptist Church, she does so much in the area. She um, talked about the fact that there are so many people in the area that aren't even registered to vote. Uh, and then she's talked about the fact that she's talked to so many felons or, you know, convicted felons that served their time uh, that are now out uh, that have no idea they can now register to vote. And so she was standing there talking about that and saying, you know what? We're doing vaccine shots. They're doing vaccine shots on Saturday. And so she's going to talk more about that with people that come over to get vaccinated. So, um, you know, it's good that we have so many people on the ball in these areas. But yes, I wish there were more people like Joyous that were on the ball. Uh, Black Wolf, I do enjoy your commentaries and your perspective, but there are a lot of people covering the same stories. And me personally, I like to view their perspectives also. But just know I will always come back to your videos and ever in a position to vote for you in elected office, I will. Thank you. Hang in there. Oh, thank you, Black Wolf. That was really nice of you. Um, let's see. Irene says the things you want to bring back that worked for Baltimore should not be applied to people in Albuquerque, Missouri. Gun laws are nothing like Baltimore gun laws. Less federal government. Yes, um, definitely. So I think we can all agree that we all support the Second Amendment. Uh, I think we would all agree that it's not that you take the guns off the streets, you take the criminals off the streets. Uh, I agree with you, Irene. It is it is totally different in other areas of this country. Um, it's sad that, you know, we have so many people on the streets of Baltimore that should not have their hands on guns at all because they're terrible people uh, that do. Uh, and it's unfortunate. It's something that we have to finally take control of. And, you know, I don't think the consent decree that is on uh, the police department in Baltimore now is is helpful. Um, I think there are a lot of police that feel like they're being, you know, ridiculed whenever they're doing their, you know, regular everyday job. It makes it harder to be a police officer. Um, so if they do see someone that is carrying a handgun and say that they know this individual and know that this individual should not have a handgun, uh, they're less likely to run over to them and, you know, basically check out and see if they have a handgun on them, then run their, you know, license or whatever they have to show that they shouldn't have a handgun because a lot of times they're doing what they're calling walkthroughs, right? So they'll bring them down to central booking. Um, and unfortunately, we have a progressive state's attorney that feels, you know, walking around with a gun isn't really um, something that should be on, on citation. And, and so then, you know, they take them to central booking. They know they're not going to be prosecuted. They basically get a slap on the wrist and then they leave. Um, and then these individuals go get their hands on another gun. And unfortunately, those are the same individuals that will usually commit a violent crime not too far down the line. Um, why the state's attorney can't see that, I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, it's something that I think we have data that shows <laughs> it happens all the time. Um, but again, these are the kind of people that just should not be in office. And, you know, I think, you know, Baltimore City really does need to think about who they elect, right? You know, it, it's not just the mayor, it's not just city council. Uh, there are people like the state's attorneys, there are, there are people that you really need to take a look at and say, wow, you know, are these people making it worse around in these neighborhoods or are they making it better? And we should not be electing people based on their gender and of course their race, um, which I see happen often. Uh, and that to me is another detrimental thing to do in any area of this country. But that is what we do, unfortunately. So those are some of the, uh, the responses and comments. If you guys want to, you can take a look at this video. It's still up talking about the crime and violence in Baltimore City. Uh, make sure if you want to leave a comment that you do, because I think a lot of people do read the comments to see what other people are saying in their perspective. Um, I appreciate your perspective, definitely. Um, I wish there was more that we can do than just talk about it. Uh, but hopefully we'll get in office. Uh, as you guys know, I have the PAC Red Renaissance. Uh, Antonio Pataco is running in uh, District 3, which also encompasses Baltimore City and in Maryland. Uh, and I hope he gets in office as well. You know, we get people in there to change these things. 
Um, hopefully we'll have the same amount of people running for city council as we did last time around, Republicans. Uh, if we get people in these seats, you best believe there's going to be some changes. And that's why I am fighting so hard to make it happen. Uh, enjoy your day.